Hello again, uh, I've just completed this little scene here I was having a mess around with um, tilt brush again um, and I got stuck in I didn't really know what I was going to do so I went into the poly library and picked out an elephant I thought I'll do something themed around an elephant um, I'm using the thick ink brush I think there, if I can remember and um, I've just got stuck in rendering it and um, listen to a bit of music, listen to a bit of Storm Roses um, it's great when you're in this, you're in a world of your own, you just, it's like conducting an orchestra, it's absolutely fantastic. Um, I should have used the, the pin really to pin my model into place, because uh, I kept losing it uh, as, I was, as I was rendering this. Um, but I've sussed out how to do it now, I didn't really know how to do it at the time. And as you can see there, I'm just filling in all the holes, I'm, I'm adjusting it, altering it to, to how I think really. Um, it took it took about two hours to do this. The headset went dead, um, so I've, I've kind of edited it down into about fourteen minutes. Um, so there's, there's quite a few bit that goes into it. Um, there's no rules. I'm not following the rules. I'm just I'm just um, just basically just doing what I think at the time. Um, I mean, to be honest, I didn't really know what I was doing. Um, I had no idea. I couldn't tell you what I was doing at all. Um, I just knew it was going to be based based around um, elephants. Um, as you can see, there, I'm just filling in all the little bits um, that you can't really do, or you don't notice uh, when when the model's in there. You don't really notice them, but there'll be little little gaps that you're filling in. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, it's just to give a good impression, really. Um, you know, you know. And there's the there's the mo there's the poly model at the side of it. I get rid of that. What I do is. I, I, I dive in, I select it all, and um, I can copy, copy as many, many elephants as I want, uh, which is pretty good really because you can save them for the project. So now I've got that rendered, I can I can save, save a new project now and start again. And my elephants there already rendered if I decide to do it again. So there you go. Decided to do three elephants, but I got rid of the third one because of memory constraints uh, on the headset. It's not really a problem, and you know. Um, here you can see that I'm just adjusting the trunk, which is a, which is a good thing really, it lets you uh, select parts of the animal and you can just alter them, like I can just alter that that trunk bit again there and then I can, I can put a, a better curve to it, a bend to it, or you know, I can just make it up as I go along. Um, you know, I, I do that quite a lot throughout this. I just adjust the elephants to how I need them really. Um, and just wandering through them. I'm still getting I'm still getting to grips with this. Um I don't really you know that I've just put a guideline in there. I suppose I could have used anything for the guideline couldn't I? Well just put a guideline in there. Just give me something to follow really when I'm putting it up when I'm constructing the trunk. Um I've, I, no particular colour, I just thought an elephant's grey. So I'll just use the kind of greyish colour. But I do change that. Um in in between I'll just go around and change the colours bits here and bits there, you know, just, give, just give it a bit more interest really, um, it looks better as well, you know, rather than just all being one colour, I thought I'd stick a bit of different, different shades of the greys and the browns and the blues in there, and um, you probably can't see that on your screen, but that, you know, that's what I generally do, I'm still not happy with that trunk, but I do adjust it again, I'm just going to play around with the poses now, see what, see what poses I can get going, you know, see what works really. Um, I've not, not really. I know, I know, I want a couple of elephants um, in a scene, in a, in a scene. But um, I'm just going to go with the flow, see what takes me as I go along. I'll get the elephant, and I'll just tip it in there. It's quite easy. It's great. You can just select and, and basically copy and paste. Really, it's pretty, it's, um, pretty easy to use. And this is this is the version on the Oculus Quest. Um, it's got a bit of memory constraints, but you can work around it. To be honest, you can you can delete um, a lot of the strokes you don't need. You can get rid of, you know. So it's you, you can work around a lot of the constraints. I mean, I've seen some of the work in uh, some of the other headsets. You know, the PC ones like the Vive and all. You know, and they're fantastic. But it won't be a matter of time before the the Oculus Quest can do that. Yeah, now I'm just going to adjust the elephant's head, um, and then what do I do? I adjust the oppose. 
put them together. I've got a bit of a sniff, sniffles today, so <laughs> just got to bear with me and get rid of what I don't want. And then I'll just patch it up. I'll just get in there and patch it all up. Um, and, and I'll, I'll continue to do this. You might do this two or three times to be happy with what you what you've got really. And um, I quite like that. It looks all right from the back. Of that it looks kind of natural. I'm trying trying to get like a natural kind of elephants kind of scene. I think. Um, yeah, I've just did that, that trunk. I'll adjust that trunk as well. So it's more it's more organic. I'm, I'm trying to after a bit of a more organic feel to it. Um, which is you just gotta work with it, edit it, adjust things, um, move things about a bit really, and play with the colour and the lighting. But I think that's a good choice of brush that um, for the elephants. It's like a nice textured brush, real thick elephant skin brush. <laughs> that's why I decided to use it. Yeah, just get rid of the bits that I don't want. Um, obviously the video was too long, about two hours, I couldn't, YouTube would only let me have 15 minutes, otherwise I would have stuck the whole video on. Right, this is where I messed up, I actually deleted the recording by accident, I lost it but didn't realise it by the time I come to um, editing it down. But basically the water was done with the, with, it's the, it's the diamond brush, and then I went, got the velvet brush, and I just wheeled it up and down to give the impression of water. And then I went round with the matte hall brush to do the rocks. Um, it didn't take long. It's, it's quite, you, you know, just playing around with the brushes, you'd be able to tell what I use there. But the velvet brush is, is pretty, um, it's a pretty good brush that. You, you can kind of blend the colours. Um, different, like I use different shades of greens and blues. I went through the diamond brush. And it produced, um, a, you know, you can't really tell on your screen. But when you're in the headset looking at it, it's a really good effect. You can tell all the colours are shaded, and it, it does give um, gives like an impression of movement, which was quite happy with. So that's why I left it. And obviously, the, the, these trees got a kind of African feel about them. I just went up same brush again I used for the elephants, uh, just a different colour, and then I used the pinched. What's it called? Is it the tapered pinched for the for the leaves, and just varying the sizes. And again, I just copy and paste it. It's it's quite. Um, and then just vary the size of it and just dot them about. I think I dotted about three of them about here. Um, it's quite pretty easy, but I think if you know what you're doing, you could whip something off like this, you know, within half an hour, probably an hour. What's great about it, you can download them or upload them to websites like Poly or Sketchfab, and you can on your computer, you can, you can print them off and frame them. You know, you can play around with them, stick them in your editor. Um, like Photoshop or whatever, um, adjust them and print them off and hang them on your wall so everyone can um, enjoy them. And again, I just copy and paste it. Um, and I'm, I'm just kind of trying to build up a scene in my head. I, I am just basically making it up as I go along, but uh, the more it's coming together, I'm getting more of an idea uh, of what I want. Like I feel I'm trying to, trying to create more of an atmosphere than anything. Um, you know, I'm like a kind of nighttime elephant meeting, I guess. I just want to create an atmosphere. Um, same again. I think I used the, the pinch tape brush again for that. Just whip them up any old hour. Don't give much thought to it. Just slap it right in there. And you know, if they look right, you leave them. If they don't, you can just undo. It's quite, it's quite simple to do. And that's what I did. And I kind of, kind of like doing the backs as well. You know, the backs of the, of the, um, uh, you know, the artwork. Um, you know, because people do look around them because they, they are three D. So you might as well do. And I think in doing the back as well, it kind of finishes it off. It's like you've just not done one viewing point and left it. You, you've kind of gone all the way around, so it looks quite decent from all angles. I'm just kind of just playing with the, um, do some vegetation really yeah, I'm happy with that shape and I'll just dot it about just put it where I think yeah it looks alright there I'll just dot them about basically you know trying to uh, fill the vegetation fill it with vegetation at the back so going uh, same petal brush I can't think of it it's the petal brush just go in with a petal brush 
straight up vary the colors and the speed is quite good you know when you do it fast you get, you get some interesting shapes and you can vary it depends on your scene that you're doing um, and whatnot you can vary the colors give it a bit of variation um, it kind of makes the scene look a bit more interesting Yeah, they're better than those tall ones. I try and cover the back up a bit, so it's like looks like they, they kind of come through the jungle or some through some or through some thick vegetation and into this water. Um, kind of getting the feel of what I want now. I keep saying it's pretty intuitive. Yeah, it looks all right. On save as well. Every time you've done something and you like it, after a bit, save it in case they power when your headset goes off for whatever reason you forget to save it and shut it down I'm using the coarse brush now to go through the water kind of give it like a um, feel of like disturbance or rap not rapids but like a bit of white water disturbance like fast flowing water and it's going around the rocks and the legs of the elephants um, so I've thrown a bit of that in there you can see there all the different that most of that is um, the velvet brush it's the different colours of the velvet brush, or different shades of the same colour. Um, yeah, it's pretty effective, you know, for water. You know, rather than just leaving it a dye, you know, just the, the normal diamond brush. Or the, I think it's called a little diamond, isn't it? I'm not sure. I'll have, to, I'll have to check it. Then I get a bit of vegetation, back to the elephants to finish the legs off. Yeah, a bit of smoke. In it. Well, I use the smoke brush for that, but I'm trying to give the impression... Of uh, the elephants flicking up water, you know, they like they've rushed into the water, and they're just kind of playing in the water, and they've disturbed it all, and it's all getting flicked up everywhere. And I used the the, the smoke brush. I just tried different colours until I found one that you know, until I found the the right colour that kind of suited the um, I'm going to say the ambience of <laughs> the ambience really. And um, I get there I go. I, this is where I change the colours. I go into the elephants and I give. I spent quite a lot of time doing that. Different colours of you know different parts of the elephant to vary it so it's just not all kind of different shades of grey. Um, obviously, I can't show you that in this video. Um, finish it off. I save it. I'm just learning how to use that. To be honest, I don't know why I went on GIF. I was just taking a photo of it really. Um, and I'm going to stick a little moon at the top. Stick a moon between them, make it a bit more atmospheric. I've got to say, the colours in the headset are a lot more better than the colours you see on the screen. Um, I'm messing around with the lighting here uh, to see if I can get it a bit more. I've used that word a lot, atmospheric. Um, it brings out the, from different angles, it brings out different shades and different kind of colours. It gives it a different feel. Um, I didn't, uh, even though I'm playing around with it a lot there, I didn't actually alter it that much. I just wanted the light coming down on the side of the elephants from the top, you know, uh, looking at it now on the screen, so the top left. So I've just varied it a bit. Um, and then what I do, I kind of make a moon. Um, I'm trying to think what brush you use for the moon. Anyway, I use, I use the sphere. And I, and I coloured in, I think it was, I used the soft highlighter. I'll do it in a minute. I got the soft highlighter going on the sphere. Um, I'll wait, I'll wait until I'm happy with that. <laughs> yeah, here we go. I got the sphere. And I just basically coloured it in with a soft highlighter, so it's still glowing. And I went over it with a splatter brush, just to give the basic impression of the moon. And then, I wish I'd done it bigger. Anyway, thanks for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, sorry for my sniffly nose. And I, would, I do think I'll make that alter that moon and make it a bit bigger. And uh, please like and subscribe. Uh, bye for now. See you next time.